Hey guys, it's Ewan with the Air Zoo. I ventured out of the Air Zoo and I'm visiting our friends at the Gilmore Car Museum to check out an amazing vehicle in their collection. It's this car right here. It's the Chrysler Turbine Car. And if you haven't guessed from the name, this hardtop coupe was powered by a turbine engine. Now, when I think of turbine engines, I immediately think of engines like the Pratt & Whitney J58 or the historic Allison J33. I don't think of an Italian-designed, American-powered car. But Chrysler made a serious effort to bring the turbine engine to the automobile. The Chrysler turbine car was manufactured by Chrysler from 1963 to 1964. Its body was constructed by the Italian design studio Ghia, and it was powered by Chrysler's A831 engine. The A831 was the fourth generation of turbine engine developed by the company. The previous three generations were built in very small numbers. In total, Chrysler produced 55 turbine cars, five prototypes, and a limited run of 50 for a public user program. These 50 cars were lent to the public at no charge for a three-month period. Participants drove the cars around and gave Chrysler in-depth feedback about their experiences. All 50 were painted in a beautiful turbine brown and featured power brakes, power steering, and fancy electric windows. From the front, you wouldn't know how special this car is. It blends in with the crowd and really acts as a poker face hiding the secrets underneath the hood. But that poker face cracks immediately when you get to the rear of the vehicle. Just look at it. It's the rear of a fighter jet or a spaceship, not a car. These lights look both like a turbine and an exhaust. And this little tail bit reminds me of the beaver tail you might find on an F-14 Tomcat. As mentioned, the car was powered by Chrysler's A831 engine. This turbine engine compresses air coming into the engine and that's mixed with fuel and ignited. The red hot gas is forced past a set of turbines which power the vehicle and other components. A pair of heat exchangers lower the temperature of the exhaust, allowing it to leave the car without blistering the paint of following vehicles. What makes the A831 a particularly interesting engine was its ability to operate on a variety of different fuels. You could go out for a lovely drive in the countryside on a tank of diesel, unleaded gasoline, kerosene, jet fuel, and even tequila. When fired up, this engine emitted a jet whine instead of the deep piston rumble. But this engine also required a high level of precision to manufacture, which made it expensive compared to its piston peers. The car was sluggish to accelerate and had a multiple step startup procedure, which some users found complicated. The car was fine, but it wasn't revolutionary. Chrysler ended the user program in January 1966. The 50 vehicles were driven by over 200 people during the program and accumulated over 1 million miles on the roads. Chrysler reclaimed the cars and destroyed all but nine. The idea of using gas turbine engines for cars died shortly after. The engines were too expensive to produce, they had poor fuel economy, and well, they wouldn't meet government emission regulations. The piston engine would remain king. Thanks for watching and thanks to the Gilmore Car Museum for letting me film here today. Remember, this October is the Southwest Michigan Cultural Membership Exchange. And that means if you're a member of any of these six Southwest Michigan cultural institutions, you get free access to all six during the month of October. Just show your membership and photo ID. And remember, become an AirZoo member today at airzoo.org slash membership.